here's what we need to tell you. President Akufuado, in the coming days, will outdoor a national youth policy. Well, the document, which recently received cabinet approval, primarily aims at ensuring a comprehensive framework and direction for all stakeholders involved in the implementation of policies, programs and projects for youth development. The National Youth Authority, the supervising agency, in a bit to further deepen stakeholder engagements uh, on the policy, is hoping to use the mailing National Youth Conference, uh, which will be held in Accra in the coming days uh, on the occasion of the International Youth Day, to gather feedback on the best possible uh, approach in achieving the aims of the document. Joining us in studio now is uh, Pius Enam Hajde, Chief Executive Officer of the National Youth Authority. Enam, it's good to see you in our studios. It's good to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've been away for some time, but it's yeah. good to, to have you back. So Thank let's you. talk Thank about you. the uh, National Youth Policy itself. Um, how did you arrive at, at finalizing that document, first of all? Thank you very much. Good afternoon to you and to our cherished uh, viewers, especially the young people of this country. The almost 12 million of, of uh, out of which 2,000 2, will be gathered at the Anakazo uh, Bible uh, Ministry Training Center right. in Ekropon, in North Accra. Okay. Uh, so, so it won't happen in Accra. Okay. It will right. happen in, oh, okay. in Ekropon mm. at the Anakazo Bible and Ministry Training Center mm. for the first ever National Youth Conference. But you speak about the National Youth Policy. Right. Um, the last time that Ghana had a National Youth Policy was in 2010. Okay. And by 2014, they developed an implementation plan. And when His Excellency President Akufado assumed the reins of power, he instructed that we should uh, look at the policy to uh, review it. Policy documents are dynamic, as you know, because circumstances change. And so right. uh, the framework within which development must occur has to respond to the exigencies of the time. Right. And so there was a consultative process there were regional-based consultative, consultative meetings. Right. Uh, there were stakeholder consultative meetings, even at the national level, bringing youth groups on board, bringing uh, civil society organizations, and, and so on. Mm. And of course, it ended up on the desk uh, of His Excellency the President okay. and Cabinet. Mm. And uh, not too long ago, we received Cabinet approval for right. both the policy document, okay. the National Youth Policy 2022-2032, okay. And its accompanying implementation plan right. and we are quite excited in fact my personal view mm -hmm. is that the policy document and implementation plan which we inherited right. was more like the strategic plan of the national youth authority okay. but our view so, so this is a revised this is revised revised and, policy and, okay. and therefore it is more comprehensive mm. like i was saying we held the view that what we inherited looked more like the strategic plan of the National Youth Authority, and that a youth policy in its real sense should be cross-cutting in nature because there are many departments, agencies, and ministries that are involved in the youth development ecosystem. Yeah. For instance, if you read the youth policy, for instance, okay. on the matter of education, mm -hmm. the youth of Ghana have aspirations, and they have, for instance, said that they feel that there is a mismatch between curriculum right. and the needs of the job market and industry. Right and that there is a need to review curriculum so that the needs of industry can be captured. The National Youth Authority or its mother ministry, the Ministry of Youth and Sports, is not re uh, responsible for uh, that, developing that, a curriculum. It's for the Ministry of Education. So that is for education. In health, the youth have aspirations. In agriculture, we do. In trade, in industry, uh, and in interior security, we do have. So what we have done is to galvanize and bring together the views and aspirations of the youth uh, and align it with our developmental priorities and the vision of His Excellency the President okay. into the policy document. Okay. And so it is much more comprehensive. So if you check the implementation plan, for instance, right. there are many things that the ministry, our mother ministry, the Ministry of Youth and Sports, or even us at the National Youth Authority are not responsible for, yeah. but some other ministries, departments, on, and agencies are responsible for that. Like I said, right. I give you the example yeah, the of the education and all. But what we do mm -hmm. at the National Youth Authority and at the ministry mm -hmm. is to have a tracking mechanism to ensure that across all the various spheres of national life, right. the aspirations and the plans that are captured mm -hmm. in the policy are reflected in the programming of right. all the various ministries and but departments. But ultimately, what do you seek to achieve? Um, for instance, some would say, let's focus on 
employment issues right. because, because it's, it's part of the Correct. front burner matters that Correct. concerns uh, the average Ghanaian youth. So do you have a set of goals that you have put into that document and what timelines are you giving to it? There are sets of goals and uh, the timeline is uh, 10 years between 2022 uh, to 2032. Mm -hmm. And we are clear that on every thematic area, there are a clear set of goals and uh, a certain set of actions that will have to be undertaken. But if you check unemployment, for instance, standing at some 19 point something percent, right. a little too high in our view, and has to come down to single digits, by the time that this policy will be reviewed, mm -hmm. it should be single digits. But it again is cross-cutting in nature, because to deal with the problem of employment, we have to deal with education. If the, the employers are, f are feeling that the, the materials that we are producing and do not match what they want, then we have to also look at that area. Again, it is also about the general economic environment which allows the private sector, which has the absorptive capacity, mm -hmm. as far as youth unemployment or employment is concerned, right. the economic environment will impact on the capacity of the private sector mm -hmm. to employ people. But generally, you see in the national youth policy right. a renewed effort on technical and vocational education mm -hmm. and on uh, entrepreneurial uh, development. Since you're talking about entrepreneurship, um, we heard about the You Start project with the fi finance ministry is promising us. Uh, what room are you making for that in this policy for us? It is. It is very much an important part of the national youth policy because, like I said, the view is to grow the can-do spirit of the Ghanaian young person who is intelligent, who is committed, who is willing to run a small business and manage it properly, but who admittedly also has major barriers, for instance, the limitation to capital and funding. And that is why the U-Start is being brought on board to deal with that problem of the limitation to funding. About 10 billion cities is going to be injected into the economy over the next three years with a view to create one million jobs. And that is why, blessed, we are quite saddened that some other people appear to be excited that the E-Levy is not performing too well because the E-Levy is one of the key enablers of the U-Start in initiative. Mm. But we believe that they can do spirit. You see the young people doing sobolo, you right. see them doing bakery, you see them doing very, very, the Ghanaian is creative at heart. We are by nature very, very entrepreneurial. What we have is the structural limitations of collateral. You have to bring a collateral to be able to get capital and all that. You start sticks to circumvent that challenge so that young people between the ages of 35 uh, and 15 can be assisted mm -hmm. to run those critical aspects of the economy, medium, micro and small scale industries. Mm -hmm. They have the capacity of growth and we are hoping mm -hmm. that the vision of His Excellency the President which is to turn young job seekers right. who carry uh, uh, CVs in yeah, their armpits the into right. young job owners and job givers themselves. Mm. And that's why we are quite excited about the youth start. Uh, you, and that question has faced you almost all the time. And I'm sure that I'll, I'll be adding to that number. How many jobs have you created as, as the NYA and by extension, this government? Well, like I said, the NYA is the melting pot. Right. And so we can report to you on the figures, not necessarily jobs that are created by us because there are several and varied interventions that are creating jobs. Right. The YEA is creating jobs. The NAPCO created about some 100,000 jobs in times past. Yes. Uh, the uh, NALEP under the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources is creating a lot of jobs as far as uh, the reclamation of land and so on is concerned. Yes. What we are seeking to do at the National Youth Authority is to have a bird's eye view mm -hmm. and be the melting pot, mm -hmm. facilitate all of the interventions that inure mm -hmm. to the total and holistic development of the Ghanaian youth. Right. So uh, even in the private sector, blessed, you have a job, you are a young man. Right. And so in counting the number of young persons who have been employed mm -hmm. Uh, within a certain time frame, people like you ought to be counted as well. In the numbers? We are, we are, we are not only looking at the public space. Right. So let me uh, uh, be candid with you right. and say to you that beyond the large numbers in the public space, the National Youth Authority is now uh, in the exercise of aggregating all of the figures mm -hmm. and that in due course, uh, both across both the private and the public sector, mm -hmm. 
the total number of persons, that young persons, that the economy has been able to absorb by way of jobs will be proved. I'm asking be the question because um, there are fears that we may be adding on to the unemployment figures. The fact that, for instance, government policy on uh, the nation builders call NAPCO, that they will be ending by September. Government is urging them to take advantage of the U-START project. So if nothing is done immediately to, to capture some of these things in that policy that will be outdoored by the president, we may have another crisis by the end of September. Well, I can assure you that um, there are the intentions and there are the plans to deal with the problem of youth unemployment. You are right that NAPCO is being transitioned so that the beneficiaries now take advantage of the youth start because they have gathered enough experiences learning at the feet of others to begin to own their own businesses. And that's why I'm, I sit on the steering committee of the youth start and I, I, can report, I can report to you that plans are far advanced to launch the U-Start and that 10 billion over the next three years to create one 10 billion, million, Ghan 10 billion Ghana cities right. into the economy mm. over the next three years mm. to create one million jobs will bring down the rate of youth unemployment from about 19% to on the precipice of about 10%. So we, we are quite clear that we want to move down unemployment into the sin single digits. But the point is, how many of these NAPCO personnel are equipped, are trained enough to take advantage of, 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 of the USTAT project? Because I'm sure with the USTAT, you, you must have some enterprise going on Correct. for yourself. So Correct. they may not have any, any, any well, they, job they, at they, hand, Well, they, right? they do. I can, I can assure you. I, I just had the opportunity to bring in some new uh, recruits into my organization. Many of them are beneficiaries of the NAPCO and, and Blizzard, I can assure you that they are quite prepared, they have gathered enormous and enough experience to manage on their own. However, as a part of the you start arrangements, there's a mandatory training. Before you benefit, you have to undergo training, especially in the areas of soft skills and uh, like bookkeeping, like uh, customer relations, and even precision mentality. Look, uh, Blizzard, how many times have you not gone to your Ghanaian tailor and when he measures you, he doesn't right. want to write it down? Yes. Yeah. Only for you to come back to notice that the dress is either too small or too big. Right. Precision mentality is critical in the current day business environment. And so the you start by its arrangement, by its structure, you have to undergo mandatory training to equip you. In fact, when we are even talking about machinery, we are not under you start merely going to give beneficiaries money to procure machinery, okay? The machinery will be procured, and then there is, at the top of it, a mentorship and supervising uh, and tracking mechanism to ensure that every beneficiary of the U-Start is more mentored mm. and directed right. in good business practices and so on. So I can assure you that uh, beyond the training that NAPCO has given, mm. U-Start itself has inbuilt within the mechanism training of the beneficiaries. Uh, uh, we need to wrap up, but about a week ago when you uh, held a press conference on this subject matter, you pointed out that the agenda on which you're embarking to create jobs will be non-partisan. Are you involving all the stakeholders, I mean from all the political parties, because they are crucial in this process? Absolutely. As we speak, many, many youth organizers of other political parties are on their way to Anakazu as a part of the National Youth Conference. You're involving the NDC? The, the, every youth organization, every, almost all of the youth organizations, I've had meetings with the leadership of all of the political parties ever since, youth wings of all of the political parties, ever since I assumed uh, office as CEO of the National Youth Authority, because they are an important uh, player in the youth ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So everything that we are doing, we are doing it looking at Ghana, Mother Ghana, and the young people of Ghana, and not political parties in mind. But blessed, let me also use the opportunity to inform you that on Friday, the young people of Ghana, yeah. acting through their National Youth Authority, will honor and confer on His Excellency, the President of the Republic, the star of the youth of Ghana. You know why? We are clear that his interventions, truly and really unprecedented, but for want of time, I would have gone through a long list. The interventions of His Excellency, the President, can only be aimed at preparing the youth of Ghana for the future. And we are happy at it. We are setting a precedence that people who are given positions of responsibility must know that the young people of this country are watching them. And when they do well by us, we shall also recognize their efforts and we shall 
publicize it and let the world know that we are happy with their output. And Mr. President will be the first uh, awardee of the Star of the Youth of Ghana uh, Awards. And we'll be certainly on the lookout for that. That's the Chief Executive Officer for the National Youth Authority, Pius Enam Hajda. You're still with us here on the polls on the Joy News channel. When we return, we'll talk about illegal mining in parts of the Western region. Please stay.